referees are George Nicholson from the other assistant referee is Oni Laflamme. Uh, and I'm assuming he is from here, right here in Canada. I think, I really think this is going to be a good match, Marlene. I mean, based on the games that we saw yesterday, um, you know, they're actually similar size athletes on these teams. Instead of seeing one of these teams up against, you know, uh, Trinidad and Tobago or Canada, some of the bigger teams. And based on what we saw yesterday, somewhat of a similar style play. So we'll kind of see what happens here. I am, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Now, again, Mexico's goal coming into this tournament was to place, to rank first amongst the, the Caribbean nations, coming second overall in the tournament. Um, and the Cayman Islands were proud to say that they're a, a slightly older, more experienced <laughs> team, so. Yeah, we had, we had fun talking to the Cayman Islands. They are a very mature, and I say mature, I don't like older, you know. I think mature just sounds nice. Uh, a mature team, and uh, Heather was sharing with us yesterday that three of the players are? Four. Four of the players. Oh, no, I'm lying. Three. three. Three of the players are in their 40s. So they're going to have to use their mature youth. woman's strength. Their mature inner youth. Inner youth. Yes. Nice placement by Cayman. Quick distribution. The ball's out. Now, we do apologize. The Cayman Islands have jerseys where it's very difficult to see their numbers. So for any of the viewers watching, we may not be able to call people by names. Um, and so we do apologize for that, but we'll, <laughs> we'll do the best we can. Oh, and uh, just a bit of fumble there. Sometimes you get ahead of yourself. You're, you're running, you're thinking about this, and then you yeah, need to focus on the ball there. So we'll have a line out here. Again, even the line outs are very different in the sevens game, three, three person line outs. And it's, what's interesting is a lot of, a lot of the times, uh, I know for the Canada team, the team is generally made up of uh, uh, backs players and back row from the 15s game. Um, so some of these players have never even been in, in uh, lifted or even boosted with their back row. So that it's was a new a experience. Break yeah. by number 11 there, Alejandra Daniela Rosales Robles. That was beautifully said. Thank you very much. She's, Thank she's worked on this. <laughs> Okay, good movement by Mexico. Again, it's, it's, it's also the pressure, the pressure of getting these balls and oh. nice run to the outside. Oh, she's looked at that support uh, and just missed that. And it's now that should be a call, yeah, that'll be uh, That was a good run by, I believe that was number nine on Mexico, Rosa Adriana Rivera, and she's the captain of the team. So we'll try her best to I will say try the, my Mexican, best. Me the Mexican name of the Mexican players as I much will, as she can. Yes. She's worked hard on this. <laughs> we were practicing. We're balls in. Some pressure, but they get it out there. Oh, and we can see a little kick there. Little chip. She doesn't get the ball back. Mexico are now going to try and move it here to the outside. They have an opportunity here, probably for a try. Oh, again, oh, the importance of getting the ball in hand. And she used a little straight arm, close to the sidelines. All we need is a tackle. I'm not sure if she's going to, and she's going to be uh, pushed out there. <laughs> she looks a little deflated, but uh, hopefully she'll get back up. <laughs> Maybe a little upset by at herself. It is really important to be aware of the sideline in the sevens game and in the 15s game um, and learn to sort of be, be aware of where you are and probably try and push yourself back inside with a sidestep. The sideline is definitely your yeah. enemy in sevens. You want to keep possession. As soon as you touch out of bounds, you're basically handing the ball over to the other team. Definitely. And there's not a lot of time in sevens, so you really want to keep that ball. Yeah. So she's probably going to want to work on that sidestep or cutting back in. One pause and a good hard step back to the inside would have been really nice there. Yeah.
Team try. That the was team try, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they came from the bottom of the field and all worked their way all the way up. Uh, so you could sense that they were, again, you, you, you don't notice it at first, but the sevens game is extremely tiring. So, um, you know, when you're working up and down the field and you're running at full speed, um, you're really working that uh, some of that anaerobic system, but you need a really strong aerobic base. And these girls work on their fitness uh, a lot, uh, both speed and both also building that aerobic base to allow them to, 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 um, to get through these games. And that's one thing that was specified about the Cayman Islands team. They really, really work a lot on their fitness. Um, and so we'll see how it plays out today. Yeah. I guess most teams probably say they work on their fitness. <laughs> it's about fair enough. It all comes down to, to who uh, on the day. We'll, we'll see. We'll see who, uh, who's, who's the fittest on, on average. So again, it's still a close game. Five nothing for Mexico. We're still in the first half. That was a good chase by Mexico. Good work, but yep. And I think number eleven, Me Daniela Rosales. Mexico looks like they're hitting their stride right now. So Rosales is vice captain for the Mexican team, and she's been having a few really good runs so far this mm -hmm. game. When you were talking to the, the Mexican manager, what were some of the, the players that he was uh, referring to or having really exciting seasons? Yeah, some of the key players for Mexico are uh, the captain, Rosa, Rosa Adriana Rivera, and she actually lives in Canada, and she trains with, um, she goes on tour with... Is the, how, the Howlers. The, the Howlers, howlers so, which is a team of, of girls that get together, I guess, and go and travel yeah. to different tournaments. The Howlers is a, is a program where, gen yeah, a lot of young and up-and-coming players play in tournaments. Uh, uh, in Canada and abroad, like Las Vegas Sevens, they entered that tournament. Uh, they, they've gone to Cuba. Uh, they play in tournaments in, in Canada as well. And, and it's just giving some of our up and coming talent a, a chance to, to perform. Yeah, another one is Daniela Rosales. We've seen her with the ball, number 11, making a lot of those runs. That was another key player and vice captain for the team. So she's a key one. Okay, we see a penalty there. Let's go. Cayman Islands has an opportunity here to, to at least get back in, in Mexico's half. Good defense by Mexico. Came up hard on that, on that tackle. Now Cayman Islands needs to still spread out the side of the field. They really need to use their depth. They do look very close. They do look very close, and there's a lot of green space out here that would be a delight to use. <laughs> delight. A delight. There's some grass I asking it. to be stepped on. <laughs> we hear some yelling down on the field from the Cayman Islands to move it, move it, move it. They're trying to you know, get the ball moving to get out wide and around the corner of that outside Mexican mm -hmm. girl, so. You, you find in these games, in these uh, sevens games, it, it really does come down to execution of the pass and, and that's, and, and doing that under, under, under pressure. Um, it's one thing to be uh, doing these things unopposed and, and working on your, your 50 meter pass unopposed. And that's basically the distance these girls are expected to pass, you know, anywhere from basically 10 to, 10 to 20 meters in range yeah, and absolutely. do that pace and under pressure. And, uh, and if, it's going to be difficult at, at the high levels. If you if you can't do that, then it's going to be difficult to have success. But and there we see her again. Nice, yeah, There's Daniela Rosales, number 11. And that really did come down to passing execution. They got the ball Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Right there, nice offload by Daniela. Stayed what on the feet. What a great handoff. A little bump there by Cayman. I don't know if she was <laughs> slowing herself down or. <laughs> and that roll. looks like that was Rivera who actually finished that. And and I, those two are working really well together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you know your teammates. If, if you have some, some key players that you know go for a run, you're definitely going to get yourself over to them because um, they're probably, <laughs> especially if they get stopped, they're going to be looking to offload. So that's important. For, support is extremely important. And we're at half. And half the score is 15 nothing for Mexico. Mexico score by number nine. 
Cayman, Cayman Islands are still in this game. I don't want to give up on them here. They still have a whole second half to get themselves back in this game. So I'm sure their coaches are going to be saying some specific things and giving them some specific direction on how to get back in the game. There are definitely some things that Cayman Island, just some very basic things that Cayman Island could do differently in the second half to make this an even closer game. But you're right, it is a close game, and I think that I think that they could bring it up, at least make it a little bit of a tighter, a yeah. tighter, closer final score. Anything happens in the sevens game. So what are your thoughts about the weather for this tournament, Marlene? It is. It is. It's, well, it's get, you're really hot. <laughs> Moise is here fanning herself. Um, well, why not? <laughs> like royalty. Uh, <laughs> well, you I, wouldn't do it for me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fan her. I refuse no. to do that. Yeah. Um, it's been a great weather. It's been a perfect weekend of weather. And uh, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see the, the cornfields across from us. I, we're in the country here. Uh, Twin Elms Derby Park is sort of in the middle of a, a rural area. Um, it is, the weather's been great. People are in tank tops, uh, costumes, uh, and uh, it's just a, it's been a great weekend for rugby. It's, oh. a, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful location. It's a great spot for a rugby park, not yeah. just one field, but they've got a number of fields here. Yeah. And it's between 31, 33 degrees Celsius all weekend, so it's beautiful. Beautiful. Working, working on my tan. Great day for a game of rugby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on my freckles. <laughs> So what do you think that the coach is talking to the Mexican girls about right now, the Mexican coach? Um, I think um, with Mexico, they've had some success. You have to, you have to look at what is it ha what's going right for them. You know, how are they getting those tries and what are they doing right to get into those positions to be scoring those tries? Um, and then maybe a couple co comments on like, what, what could they could be doing better? Mexico, obviously for both teams, it's, it's execution. And when they do execute, they're great. They get to the outside and they're running up the, the, the sides of the field and they're scoring those tries. When the execution is off, they're not, they're not doing as well, right? So, I mean, I mean, the passing, I think, in a lot of these games is key. Like, some of these teams do need to work on their passing skills and, and executing those in order to get those balls out wide. And I think that's what I'm seeing personally. I would have to agree. That was president and manager Francisco Echeguren. <laughs> that was a good pronunciation. Yeah, that was Thank good. you. That was good. Um, and he spoke with us yesterday, and I think right now he's just telling his girls to keep doing what they're doing, but to maybe clean it up a little bit and yeah. keep things a little more precise. Definitely. So the kickoff by Mexico this half. They all probably also, they, hopefully they'll be coming out a little bit harder. They want to keep up this momentum. They don't want to lose it. Because Cayman obviously is going to be coming out really hard right now. And as we predicted, Cayman's trying to stay a bit. Mm -hmm. We're seeing them a little bit spread further across the field than they were first half. So that's, that's good to see. I'd like to, unfortunately we don't have the numbers, we can't see their numbers, but uh, this young woman with the, who's getting the pass now with the braids has, has been very aggressive and, I, and uh, been a key player for, for, the, for the Cayman Islands. We'll try and get this information and talk to them about, <laughs> about their numbering situation. <laughs> uh, and the ball spills out here. Possession, possession, possession in the seventh game. There is one woman on the Cayman Islands team who it's not only her first rugby tournament international tournament ever it's actually her first rugby game ever so uh, she was just brought along for some training and everything and they recruited her to, to bring her up here for this tournament so I can't tell you right now who it is on the field um, <laughs> or whether she's on the field but that's Marlene Williams so welcome to rugby Marlene <laughs> welcome to rugby oh oh the grass got her Cayman staying on their feet, they're fighting hard. They really want this try probably right now, obviously, and sort of a redundant, silly state probably. for me to make, but they probably, they're, they're in a good position right now for this try. <laughs> they're in the center of the field, and we, what we were saying about the scrums in the middle that like really give you an opportunity on either side. There's a lot of things that can happen with a, a scrum center here. So this would have been a favorite situation for me. You've got green green space on both sides and it's just a matter of really reading the opposition and picking that gap. And Mexico does it again. They have a nice little run here on the outside with some quick passes. And she has this. She's looking good right here. I believe she's gone and I can't quite see the number on. Nice try by Mexico. Very nice try by Mexico. Their confidence is up, you can tell. 
And, I, you know, with confidence comes that it, within the team, especially, is just getting those passes off quickly, knowing your teammates are going to uh, get them there, and then just doing what you need to do individually. And kicking from Mexico is Michelle Tara, and that's good. That kick is good. So Mexico's probably feeling really good. They're they're probably on their way to their their goal um, and and of, of be, being second in this tournament. Um, and I have no doubt that if they do make it to the finals and they have to play Canada, they'll they'll be going at 100%. And um, they're being realistic, but they're also they're also not going uh, uh, to lay, lay on their back if they get to the finals against Canada. They're going to work hard to, to try and find opportunities, and that's the seventh game. There's always a, there's always a chance. There is always a chance, and even whether you know to, to try and come out strong to win the game, but it's also a huge learning experience for both teams Definitely. to be able to play against a uh, different style of play. Cayman's picked up the pace a little here. Oh, there's they're a little flat. There's that strong runner again for Cayman Islands. And Mexico's really pushing them back here. Yep, they're coming up hard, and. and Cayman, Cayman Islands are flat, and they're, they're making it very uh, easy for the Mexican defense to come up and shut them down. Now, in rugby, both 15s and 7s, you do need a lot of depth so that mm. so when you're offensively staggered backwards, you can run onto that ball and you're at a full pace when you're actually receiving that pass from somebody. So when you're too flat, like you just commented that we're mm. seeing out here, it's, it's just too stagnant. You mm. get a ball when you're standing still, and it's hard to build up that speed when you've got defense right in your face. They're not quite at half yet, but they're trying to get there. Oh. And that ball's not just not, just not getting to hand. They're still have kept possession of the ball. It wasn't the best decision for a kick at that moment, or it wasn't well executed anyways. And there's number 11 again. Yeah. And Mexico, she's on her own right now, so she probably have to finish this. And she's Do you want to say it? Daniela Rosales <laughs> again, vice <laughs> captain for Mexico. That was a great run for her. Teammates are here. And we try for a nice little football. Oh, and we go for the football pass. <laughs> and, and he called that forward. He called oh. that a forward pass. So two minutes left here in this game. We'll see if Cayman Islands can squeak one out. Yeah, it would, I, I mean, it's 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 hard. I mean, Mexico is putting in a lot of pressure. They're they're on the up and up, and they're and they're uh, they're coming up really hard on their defense. And I think Cayman Islands, there's there's a f quite a few things they're just going to need to clean up before they probably beat a team like Mexico. So now it's scrum down for Cayman and Mexico. Okay. She's drawn in at least three or four defenders, which has created a lot of holes. And the gap is found by number two. That's Elizabeth Serrano on the Mexican team. Try scored. Definitely. It is very difficult to play defense consistently throughout a game. And Cayman Islands is now feeling it. They're, they're, they look a little tired, uh, a little worn down. And um, offense is a lot easier to play. <laughs> I think most people would agree. It's a lot less, a lot less tiring. <laughs> And there's really only 30 seconds left in this game. Yeah. You always want to finish strong, though. Absolutely. And 30 seconds, you could still score a couple of tries in 30 seconds. That's true. happened. It's true. That has happened. So right now, we'll see whether Cayman can just fight to the end yep, to, to, sh to shut down Mexico so they score no more, or whether we get a couple of quick little tries in here. And if like, they can keep this ball alive, with no knock-ons, no out-of-bounds, yeah, you know, no game penalties, going, even if then the, the game blows, will keep yeah. playing. Yeah. So that's the horn announcing the official time is done. We'll see if Cayman Islands can keep possession. They're going to fight hard right now. 
I mean, it's always nice to finish off on a good note. But Mexico has the ball. But uh, the penalty here. So came and has the ball back. And they're going to work hard. You can see the she has the ball in one hand. Nice offload. And they're going to try early. Can they do that? Oh. Uh, again, those. That was a little mistake there with the offload. Mexico now has possession of the ball. And I think they have another try for number 11. Oh. Number 11, Daniela Rosales, vice oh. captain. Scores again for Mexico. So Mexico is feeling really great right now. Looks like Cayman might be a little uh, not so happy with their with their performance at the, in this game, but there's still other games to go. So they gotta they gotta let this one go and move on to the next game. So we'll just see if the kick goes in for the final score. Following this game, the next game will be a men's game, and it'll be St. Vincent versus Bermuda. They're coming onto the field right now as we speak.